Okay, welcome back to Algo.js. Uh, today's question, we're looking at leak code 1143, the longest common subsequence. So given two strings, text one and text two, return the length of their longest common subsequence. If there is no common subsequence, return zero. A subsequence of a string is a new string generated from the original string with some characters deleted without changing the relative order of the remaining characters. So the example ace is a subsequence of A, B, C, D, E. A common subsequence of two strings is a subsequence that is common to both strings. So in example one, this is the example we'll be looking at in our solution. We have A, B, C, D, E. And as in the question, we have the longest common subsequence is equal to ace. Okay, so in example one, we have text one, which is A, B, C, D, E, and text two, which is ace. The output is three. So we're returning an integer. And the explanation is, well, ace is the longest common subsequence within both strings and its length is equal to three. So because this is looking for a global optimal, so the longest common subsequence, uh, we're going to utilize dynamic programming. So for our DP array, we are going to have a 2D matrix. And with dynamic programming problems, we need to set a base from which we can build upon because remember dynamic program is sub problems or solutions to sub problems until you reach the final solution. So we need to set the base of this. Now we've got ace, which is string of text two. We've got A, B, C, D, E, which is string of text one. And initially what we need to do is we need to set the initial rows and the initial columns to zero. So this is setting that base within our dynamic programming. And then we can build upon this and start to look to see whether substrings are equal to one another. And if they are, we can start populating this DP array. Okay, so we have output down here, which is going to be the final solution. So we can start looping through this now. So we can check the strings. We'll start at this position here, because we've already populated these. Is letter A equal to letter A? Yes, it is. So with this, we take from the diagonal and we add onto that diagonal value. So this value here, we add one because this is a match. So that'll give us one. We move along. Is A equal to B? No, it's not. So we take the maximum between the left value and the value above, which is one. Then we move along, is A equal to C? No, it's not. So we take the maximum from this position here. We do the same with D. We take the maximum from this position and this position. So that's one. And again, we do the same with E. Okay, so let's move on to the next row. So is C equal to A? No, it's not. So we take the maximum. Is C equal to B? No, it's not. So we take the maximum. Is C equal to C? Okay, so we have a match. Now when we have a match, we take from the diagonal and we add one. So this is going to be two now because we have two matches, right? We have the first match here, which is A and A, and we have the second match, which is C and C. Is C equal to D? No. So we take the maximum between this and this. Is C equal to E? No. So we add two into there as well. Okay, so we're on the final row now. E is not equal to A, so we take the maximum. E is not equal to B, so we take the maximum. E is not equal to C, so we take the maximum from one and two. It's going to be two. E is not equal to D, so we take the maximum, which is two. E is equal to E, so we have another match. So we take the diagonal and we add one. And that gives us three. And all we need to do is return this as the output. So that is equal to three. So in terms of the upper bound time and space complexity, time complexity in this is going to be OM times N because we have a 2D matrix that we're looping through and we're populating each value within this DP matrix. It's going to take M times N operations where M is the length of the first string and N is the length of the second string and space again is going to be the same. So it's going to be M times N because we are occupying uh, the entire DP array as extra space. Okay, so let's write this out. So let's create variables called M and N. That will be the length of both string one and string two. Let's create the DP matrix. We're going to add one to M for the empty string. So we can create that base. And we're also going to do the same for n. And rather than just filling the initial row and the initial column to zeros, 
we can simplify it to just filling the entire DP array with zero. Now we need to loop through text one and text two. We start off at one because we initially set the first row to zero. We go up to and including M and we do the same for the letters of text two. So if text one, I minus one, so the letter at text one, I minus one is equal to text two, J minus one. So if the values are equal, we can populate the DP array at IJ to the diagonal. So DP I minus one, J minus one, and we add one to it because we found a match. Else, if it's not a match, we'll populate that value within the DP array to the maximum between the left value and the value above. So I minus one J, which will get the value above, DP I J minus one, which will get the value to the left. And for the output, we need to return the integer in the last position of the DP array matrix, which is going to be DP M N. Okay, there you have it.